president. So the president spoke, Jim, with um, <laughs> President Xi, I think, on September 9th. Mm -hmm. uh, the agreement that ultimately led to uh, Ms. Monk's release was about 10 days later. Was he aware at the time, even if he did not discuss it with uh, President Xi, about what the status of the discussions were? Uh, in terms of the Department of Justice, I don't have any more detail on that. So we don't we don't know whether he knew, do you know when he first first learned that there was I just don't I'm not I'm not trying to be cute with you. I don't have any more detail on it. I'm happy to check if there's more I can convey. Okay. Um, a second question on, on all of this. You said that it wouldn't have any effect on our overall China policy. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard the president very much during the time that he's been in office about Huawei itself. Mm -hmm. And obviously part of the effort here in reaching this agreement was to get a statement that would help with the criminal case against Huawei. How does the president assess that the campaign against Huawei is going right now? Well, I have not spoken with him about his view on the campaign against Huawei. What I will tell you and just reiterate is that um, this was a legal decision. It does not change our view, this administration's view, or his view as it relates to um, our concerns about economic practices, coercive actions, and in fact, the actions that were admitted to by this individual, I mean, those type of actions. So um, it does not change our policy. It does not change our approach to policy. It does not change our concerns with some of the practices we've seen from uh, from uh, the government and leaders within China as it relates to economic I, action. I'm trying to get something a little bit different, which is, does the president believe that the initiatives you have underway to contain Huawei spread through Latin America, Africa, elsewhere, are actually yielding results in the first nine months of his presidency? You've seen them win some big contracts. You've also seen yeah. them have a very difficult time getting a lot of the semiconductors and other parts they need. I don't, I'd have to check with our team on an assessment of that, David. It's a totally fair question. And a, a last question for you, which has to do with Iran. Uh, the foreign minister of Iran, the new foreign minister, was in New York last week. He said that they were less interested in the details of what a, a revived JCPOA agreement said and much more interested in making sure that they got the sense of all the benefits from sanctions relief that they believe actually back to President Obama, they did not, even after the agreement was signed. Um, is the President Biden's view at this point that when you, if you do get back into the agreement, that Iran has to see more benefit than it actually got back after the 2015 agreement was, was reached? You mean receive more benefits than so receive more benefits than they received back in the last administration? Not on paper, but in in reality, the Iranian complaint essentially was companies were still too reluctant to do business with them. I think, David, where we are um, is we're still f quite a few steps away. And so we are eager, of course, to go back and have uh, discussions, uh, diplomatic discussions in the next round of negotiations. Uh, they may not be interested in all the details. We certainly are interested in all the details. Uh, but I just am not in a position to assess what that will look like at this point in time.